now, Dakota Ring Theater presents the continuing adventures of Canada's greatest superhero, that scourge of the underworld, hunter of those who prey upon the innocent, that marvelous masked mystery man known only as the Red Panda! The Red Panda, mysterious crusader for justice, hides his true identity as one of the city's wealthiest men in his never-ending battle against crime and corruption. Only his trusty driver, Kit Baxter, who joins him in his quest in the guise of the Flying Squirrel, knows who wears the mask of the Red Panda. This episode, The Callahan Mob. Ma! Hey, Ma, it's Kit. You ready to go? Ma? Don't shout so much, Katya. They can hear you down to the end of the street. Yes, Ma. You were supposed to be here ten minutes ago. So I thought you'd be ready to go. Do I have time to sit and wait? Bad enough I have to go to doctor at all. There you are. Hey, what's wrong with your leg? Hmm. Don't hmm me. You're limping. Aches and pains. If I knew what it was, would I need to go to the doctor? Fair point. Let me get your coat. It's on the peg. Behind, behind the door, right where it's been since I was two. Give me a second. You know who is asking about you? Oh, jeez. Who was it this time? That nice Tommy D'Amico. Tom D'Amico? The butcher? The butcher. He's a nice young man. Ma. A good provider. Ma, he must be 20 years older than me. And he looks like he slept on his face for that entire time. Don't you start. No, Ma. Don't you start. Ma Baxter's rogues gallery is going to have to wait. Here, put this on. What's wrong? You hurt your arm? Aches and pains. Get your aches and pains. Your mama's not so young as she was. Old enough to be grandmother. I mean it, Ma. Not today. Then, Katya, when if not today, what are you waiting for? Hello? Everything all right in here? Oh, you brought him. Ma, be nice. Hello, Mrs. Baxter. I hope you don't mind. The car was attracting a bit of a crowd. Oh, Katya, you didn't park that that limousine out in front of my house, did you? What other car did you think I was going to pick you up in? Oh, I didn't know you'd have to bring him. It's all right, Mrs. Baxter. Uh, Kit will take you to your appointment, drop me at the club, and then pick you up and drive you home. It's no trouble at all. No, I shouldn't imagine it would be. Come on then, Katya. That woman is crazy about me. I'm sorry, boss. I don't know what I have to do. Uh, I have a general idea, actually. What is it? I'll try anything. Oh, boy. There are just too many ways to respond to that one. Any that don't end with Kit Baxter behave yourself? No, boss. Just a minute. Oh, Dr. Cameron. You're lucky you caught me. I was just getting ready to head back out. Yes, your mother mentioned your job keeps you pretty busy. I'm uh, pretty sure that's not how she put it. <laughs> well, maybe not. Ma Baxter is very free with her opinions. Will you come in? Thank you. I've got some coffee on that's still pretty hot. No, thank you. Bit late for coffee for me. I tend to work late, but I guess she told you that, too. Actually, she did. You, uh, you look like a man with something on his mind. Well, yes. It's about your mother's injuries. Injuries? Well, she told me it was... She said it was just aches and pains. I see. What is it? What's wrong? She wasn't much more illuminating with me, but I could see the bruising. Bruising? The leg and the hip. Well, that might have been a fall... She's not as young as she used to be, but her arm looks to me like it was gripped and twisted. Hard. She didn't say anything to you? No. Well, I, I, I guess I haven't been around much. I've, I've been busy. Don't do that. Don't do what? I've known you all your life, Kit Baxter. Knew your father most of his... You get the same furrowed brow he did when he was about to blame himself for something that couldn't be helped. I don't know what happened to your mother, but I know that you are not responsible. Thanks for the thought, Doc. But I'm not sure I get off the hook that easy. Excuse me. I'd better go see my mother. 
There you are, squirrel. Get down! All right. Is this low enough? Don't get wise. What are we looking at? My mother's street. Ah. Why are we doing it from a rooftop in full costume? I couldn't say why you're doing it. I need the night off is all. And if you'd asked me for the night off... I'm asking now, aren't I? You didn't let me finish. If you'd asked me, I'd have said yes, but you didn't. You just disappeared. So I assumed you wanted me to come looking for you. So what was I supposed to do to be left alone, exactly? Anything you didn't do. You didn't meet me for patrol, didn't sign out at the lair, didn't even leave me a note telling me you'd run off with Lieutenant Mark Martin of the Northwest Mounted Police. One time! I said he had a nice chin one time! I didn't say he didn't. Do you want me to go? Yes. Tough. What? You've got an unholy gleam in your eyes and a determined set to your jaw. Something tells me that if I leave you to your own devices, I'll end up having to bring you in for murder. Which would be cinematic, but otherwise unfortunate. Why are we watching your mother's street, exactly? I need to handle this myself. Kit. Oh, boss. My ma didn't need to go to the dock for aches and pains, or a checkup, or, or any of the other yarns she spun me. A checkup? <laughs> She's never seen a doctor without good reason in her life. I was so busy figuring out how I was going to work that in with a full dance car to crime fighting, I didn't even stop to wonder. Kit, is your mother in some danger? Not just her. The whole neighborhood. Look at it. We're only four stories up, but from here you can pretty much see my whole world growing up. The people and the families crammed in this little space. The streets and the stores and the vacant lots. Kit! You know why I wanted this mask, boss? It wasn't the adventure or the danger, or even the quality time breaking noses with a certain billionaire playboy. It was this. This place, these people. I wanted a chance to protect this. Kit, what's happened? Oh, sounds like nothing. There's a gang of toughs going through the neighborhood shaking people down. A protection racket? Yeah, I guess. But these clowns aren't even organized enough to put the squeeze on shops or fight for territory. They just knock on doors demanding money. These folks have still got a roof over their heads, boss, but not much else. This isn't their savings that's being stolen. It's food for the family. Or heat or or medicine. (sighs) I've been so busy flying over rooftops, fighting killer robots and dark magic and who knows what else. Slow down, slugger. I missed the part where any of this is your fault. If my pop were alive, he used to look after the whole neighborhood. These monkeys wouldn't dare walk down his street. Ma Baxter stood up to them? She tried. Didn't go that well. I can't believe... Why would she try and keep this from me? She probably thought you'd try and handle it yourself. Runs in the family. So I gathered. And since she doesn't know about the jujitsu or the judo or the gliding membranes or the utility belt... Thanks, I got the point. And as much as your instincts tell you to watch this street like a hawk, there's probably a better way, if you don't object to a little help, that is. If I had left you a note saying I'd run off with Lieutenant Mark Martin of the Northwest Mounted Police, you wouldn't have come after me? With a horse and a lasso. Come on. Let's pay a call on Chief O'Malley. It may surprise you, Red Panda, to learn the police were actually aware of this problem. It's hardly confined to this one neighborhood. And uh, when were you planning on doing something about it, O'Malley? You can keep a lid on her, or she can wait on the window ledge. It would make my life so much easier if you two would play nice. And where exactly do you think that item falls on my to-do list? Hopefully somewhere below shutting these amateur creeps down for good, before someone else gets hurt. Do you have specific information that someone was hurt? I have enough. Not unless that someone is willing to testify in court. No, you don't. We know this kind of thing is happening throughout the city. Innocent people terrorized on their own streets, in their own homes. It makes me every bit as angry as you. I doubt it. People have every right to expect the police to protect them. But if the average citizen won't step forward, we can't make an arrest because we won't get a conviction. But if they swear out a complaint against one member of the gang... Your police force can't protect them from the others. Neither can the two of you. 
This isn't like taking out an organized racket. There's no formal structure, no payroll, no way to prove membership. We've taken one or two thugs off the street at a time, and it's only resulted in badly hurt witnesses who suddenly can't remember a thing. So nothing happens? That's just wrong. None of this is new, Flying Squirrel. I don't know why you're just discovering it now, but if you two are standing here, you obviously don't have a magic wand to wave at the problem either. The very amateur nature of these gangs is what allows them to slip through the cracks. Lousy, stinking cowards. Stealing from families. From women and children. They are cowards. That's why they pick such soft targets. But they're sheltered from reprisals. They know the law can't touch them without testimony. No, but we can. Then what? We've got a list of suspects. If beating the living daylights out of them would have put a stop to this, I'd have put my badge in a drawer and taken a squad down there months ago. Yeah? Yeah! No, Mally, I'm going to take back some of the things I've said about you. Yes, uh, well, it leaves us with the same problem, though. The minute we leave, they'll be right back to their old tricks, their parasites. All criminals are. And if you want to get rid of a parasite, you have to make the risk greater than the reward. They're not afraid of us because we can't convict them. They're not afraid of you because you won't be there every single night. Sooner or later, the city will be attacked by a hundred clockwork dolls and you'll be gone. These are small fry, little fish. So what are little fish afraid of? Bigger fish. Zoologically accurate, but I'm not sure how that helps us. Helps us? It cracks the whole scheme wide open. It does? O'Malley, you're absolutely brilliant. Well, I... Yes? Uh, now, see here. Shh. O'Malley, if you don't listen close, you'll never hear what your own brilliant plan was. The risk must outweigh the reward. It's exactly right. And what are amateur criminals most afraid of? What? Professional criminals. Gangsters don't need proof, or a witness, or even a trial. And they're never too busy to protect their turf. And their real threat is one of death, or worse. But how do we... We need to create a fictional crime boss. This kind of petty larceny has been running beneath the noses of the city's big gangs. We need to invent one willing to take a more... active interest. Be careful with this. I don't want you setting off a gang war. More than that... We must be sure not to turn our fictional mobster into a folk hero in the process. Imagining gangsters to be a sort of modern Robin Hood is wrong-headed and dangerous. Where will you get the soldiers for this gang of yours? We have resources at our disposal. I need you to replace the normal foot patrols for that area with a special squad that are in on the plan and able to play along. And, uh, look the other way once in a while. See here, I won't have my men report to you two. I wouldn't hear of it. Why don't you put that able young officer in charge? What is his name? Constable Parker? Oh, I don't mind if I do. Andy Parker is a spit and polish man and totally by the book. You won't get anything past him, Red Panda. I wouldn't have it any other way. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's be bad guys. You are listening to the Red Panda Adventures from Decoder Ring Theater. Your address for adventure, mystery, and comedy. And in local news, the city is bracing for a new wave of gang violence. Sources inside Toronto Police Headquarters report that Dutch Callaghan, reputed underworld strongman, has been seen in the area and is believed to be setting up a new base of operations in the city, having been forced out of Chicago. In spite of circulars originating from within his department, Police Chief O'Malley insists there is no danger and continues to deny that the Callaghan gang even exists. Extra, extra, Callahan gang members behind showdown at Port Authority. Chronicle exclusive, extra. Say, did you hear about that gangster? What is it, Callahan? Dutch Callahan. They say he was the most dangerous man in New York. I heard Chicago. You're both wrong. My wife's brother plays cards with the police detective. Callahan's gang broke him out of jail out west. They came north because the Yanks can't follow him here. Why would they want to? As long as he's out of their hair, they just say good riddance. Chronicle Morning Edition! Police deny Callahan let gang massacre ever happened! Only in the Chronicle! Why does the law pretend the Callahan gang doesn't exist? Do you think they're on the take? Don't be daffy. O'Malley on the take? Never in a million years. He just doesn't want to cause a panic. 
If folks knew half the things I've heard about this Callahan... Still, something's got to be done. And quickly. Calling all cars. Calling all cars. All officers are reminded to be on the lookout for Dutch Callahan and members of his gang. Suspects are believed to be armed and extremely dangerous. That is all. See, boss? The cops say the Callahan gang ain't real, but they got warnings out on their own police band. What do we do? Nothing! We don't do nothing! I don't know this Callahan from Adam, but as long as he don't come looking for a fight, I don't want no part of him! But if he sticks his nose in our business, I want to know about it yesterday! Well, boss, we must have their attention by now. The whole city's waiting to see what Dutch Callahan and his goons are going to do. Yes, Squirrel. The real underworld organizations know there was no gang massacre, that no one has tried to muscle in on the gambling rackets or the docks, but the rest of the city is rife with rumors and apprehension. I'm sure news has even trickled down to our knuckle-dragging quarry by now. I don't know how you got the Chronicle to print all those crazy stories. I bought the Chronicle last year, remember? So they just print whatever you tell them? Not exactly. I telephoned the editor and told him that the Callahan gang was a blight on our fair city and that I wanted the Chronicle to use every resource to see that he was brought to justice. They can't print wild, unsubstantiated rumors, but they can print the fact that the police continue to deny the wild, unsubstantiated rumors. And every other paper in town has to jump on the bandwagon. Yes. That can't be good. Would you like to bemoan the sorry state of journalism or make the bad guys cry like little girls? Because today I can't do both. Yes, boss. Looks like the boys are waiting in the alley. Well, let's get cracking. You know how Dutch Callahan's gang hates to be kept waiting. I feel ridiculous with this mustache. You're only saying this because you look ridiculous with this mustache. You keep quiet, Spiro. You think your disguise looks any better? What is wrong with my disguise? I think the eye patch makes Spiro look dangerous. Oh, sure. You're the most dangerous pirate in Midtown. Is there a problem, gentlemen? Whoa! <laughs> Chief, do you have to sneak up on us like that? With the five of you primping like schoolgirls, a brass quartet could sneak up on you without too much trouble. You know what you have to do, Mac? I think we've got the nuances. We just don't normally get to trade punches with the bad guys while you two watch from the sidelines. Just don't get used to it, tough guy. And don't trade punches, Mr. Tully. Just give punches. Give. Don't take. Are you sure you want to do this, Spiro? You're a contact man. You never signed on for this. I must do something while my gymnasium is rebuilt. And someday, remind me to ask how you managed that. As long as you don't hold your breath for an answer. So why should today be any different? <laughs> Fellas, he's coming out of... Oh, it's you, sir. You brought Eagle Eyes Kelly in on this, too? Nothing but the best for the Callahan gang. Report. Three of the men from the police report just came out of the bar at the end of the street. Watson is heading up Sumac. Peters and Black are coming this way. Constable Parker's got his patrol off the street. Everything's ready. Spiro, you and Jake pick up Watson. And make sure you leave some marks. Come on, Junior. I teach you how to give a nice shiner. Mac, you and the rest get ready for Peters and Black. Roger that, Chief. Come on, boys. Harry, you head down Gerard Street and see if you can spot any of the others. Take this. It's only a loan, so don't get too excited. A radio ring? Gosh! Don't you worry, Chief. I'll find those rats if I have to look under every rock in town. Just so I get a chance to use this. Bye, Miss Squirrel. Careful, short pants. Wow. This is quite an operation. How many agents do you have on this? Not counting Andy Parker and his squad of de facto operatives. Sixty-five. Sixty-five? Nothing but the best. For the Callahan gang. Yeah, I heard that one. You're all right, you know that? Your mother doesn't think so. My mother is misinformed. You could always... Tell her my good-for-nothing gadabout-town boss is not only the Red Panda, but also dangerous mobster Dutch Callahan? <laughs> She'd love that. Fair point. I'm not used to the sidelines. What do we do while the boys take out the trash? I brought some popcorn. You're not serious. I'm always serious. But today I also have popcorn. Come on. Let's get a seat in the bleachers. Hmm. Matt Tully leads with his left too much, don't you think? Perhaps. Seems to be working for him today. I wish he'd make with a haymaker already. 
He's giving these thugs too much of a fighting chance. <laughs> there it is. Speak of the devil. And now for a bit of gaudy dialogue. You two are out of the protection business, you hear? You knock on one more door. You shake down one more pigeon in Callahan country, you're dead. Dead, you hear me? Callahan country? Mm, I told him to go see a gangster picture to pick up the dialogue, but there was a western playing. I think they got the point. Boss! Joe's taking their wallets! I told them to. Bad guys are bad guys, right? Yeah, but... They'll put everything in the poor box at St. Michael's. Come on, we've got to hurry or we'll miss Act 2. Miss Old Man Spiro in action? Not for the world. I know you're in there. You can't hide in there forever. And the longer you make me wait, the harder it's gonna be on you. When I say it's time to pay up, it's time to pay up. Don't you make me break down this door. Hey, Watson! Do I know you guys? I think maybe you're about to. What's the idea? The idea? A message. That is the idea. Yeah? From who? Dutch Callahan. That's who. Calla... Say, what is this? These doors you knock on? They belong to Mr. Callahan. What? The pigeons inside? They belong to Mr. Callahan. Anyone else you can think of to lean on for money? They belong to Mr. Callahan, too. And Mr. Callahan does not so much like trespassers. So that's Callahan's message, is it? No. That is my message. This is from Mr. Callahan. (coughs) Listen to me, little man. From anyone else, that is a beating. From Callahan... That is a kiss on the forehead and a glass of warm milk. His Christmas present, that is. You tell your friends, protection business is closed. Once more, ever, without license from us, you make fish food. Punk. Oh, boss, that was all right. If he's got an uppercut like that, why'd you make him a contact man? He's 65, for pity's sake. I didn't know we could still do that. You sure know how to show a girl a good time, you know that? The night's still young. Oh, we're out of popcorn. 391 calling 1! 391 calling 1! Over! This is 1. Report. I'm on Sackville, just south of Spruce. I picked up two more from the wish list heading north. Good work. There should be a blind beggar in a doorway just ahead. Yes, sir! I see him. When you pass, give him a penny and say, In Australia, it's summertime. He'll handle the rest. Really? Okie dokie. Roger that. And Harry, meet us on the rooftop of the Walker building with some peanuts. Katya, stop fussing. I told you already. I'm fine. And you haven't had any more trouble. Not from anyone. Neither have any of my neighbors. Not for weeks. Well, that's good. It's the strangest thing. They just disappeared. Some people say the police fixed them. Some people think they were scared off by other gangsters. <gasps> Katya, what a world we live in. Yes, Ma. But our little corner of it is all right. For now. If only there was someone to stand up to those brutes. Or if your father was here. Katya, look out the window. What is it? That man standing by your limousine. It's not exactly my limousine, Ma. Yeah, I see him. What about him? That's the man who hurt my arm. I haven't seen him since... Why is he yelling at your car? Uh Uh-oh. The boss. Katya, come back here, Katya! Come on out of that car, you hear me? You think you own this neighborhood? Step out and say it to my face, you coward. See here, old man. I don't know who you think I am. Don't pull that with me, Callahan. Who else would be down here in a big fancy car like this? Think you own the whole city, don't you? We had a nice little racket down here before you stuck your nose in. We watched each other's backs. Now everybody's too scared to spit. You have me mistaken for someone else. Don't pull that with me. You want this neighborhood? Come take it. If you like. (laughs) Now get out of here before I lose my temper. Boss! You... you broke his nose! You ran him off? 
Oh, Mrs. Baxter. I, uh, not sure what he was on about. Poor fellow seemed deranged. Uh, I, uh, oh, I, dear me, this is awkward. Ma, you okay? Katya, do you think your boss would like to come in for some fresh butter cook? Really? Uh, boss? Fresh butter cook? Well, I'd be delighted. I'll make some coffee. Well, well. Looks like you're a hero in spite of yourself. I'll try not to make a habit of it. Kit? Yes, boss? Do I like butter cook? If you don't, fake it real hard. Yes, boss. And so concludes another adventure of the Red Panda! This recording and the story, characters, and situations contained therein are the exclusive property of their creator and copyright holder, Greg Taylor, and are produced and distributed by Decoder Ring Theater through arrangement with him. These recordings may not be rebroadcast or redistributed by any means for any reason without express permission. Until next time, when Decoder Ring Theater brings you the further thrilling adventures of Canada's greatest superhero, this is Stephen Burley reminding you DecoderRingTheater.com is your address to adventure! The Red Panda Adventures, episode 29, The Callahan Mob, was written and directed by Greg Taylor, with original music by Andrea Lyons, and featured the vocal talents of Julie Cogger, Peter Higginson, Michael Booth, Peter Nichol, Stephen Burley, Kevin Robinson, Shannon Arnold, Clarissa Donetta Landon, and Greg Taylor. Until next time, for all of us here, good night. <laughs>